You may wonder if it is possible to store solar energy. And more importantly, how it is stored. Solar power technology has been having steady growth and development in many aspects. Solar energy is generated by the solar panel. It absorbs the solar power released by the sun using photovoltaic PV cells. These cells then convert solar power to electricity. From there it is sent to the inverter. The panel converts solar energy to direct current electricity DC. The inverter receives it and converts it to alternative current AC. From the inverter, the electricity is then distributed to the house. Solar panels can only generate electricity when the sun is up. That is why it is important to have a way to conserve power for later use. Unfortunately, storing up solar energy for future use is neither easy nor cheap. We have conventional ways of storing it. But there are also other creative and daring ways of saving this power. The things that make up a solar power system are, solar panels, solar inverter, solar panel mounting equipment, and system performance monitor. How to store solar power? There are different ways of storing solar energy. They are inverter batteries, electricity utilities, and grid operators. There are other less conventional ways of saving solar power. They are the flow batteries, hydrogen, and salt. It can also be stored in water and thermal plants. 1. Inverter batteries. One of the commonest means used in storing solar energy is inverter batteries or battery banks. When the solar energy is converted in the panel, it is then sent to the inverter. From there the inverter converts it to usable electricity and sends it to the house for usage. The excess electricity generated is then sent to the battery through the inverter. Electricity cannot be stored in the alternative current form. It can only be stored as a direct current. So, the inverter sends the current to the battery without passing it through its transformer. It rather sends the electricity in the same form as it received it from the panel. At night or when the weather is cloudy, the panels will stop working. The inverter will then switch from the panel to the batteries. The batteries come in different sizes and capacities. The size and capacity are what will determine the duration of the battery. Types of inverter batteries. There are three main types of battery, the lead acid battery. This type is the cheapest type of inverter battery. It has a lifespan of about three to four years. It also produces strong power. But on the downside, it needs regular maintenance and gives out poisonous gas. Maintenance-free battery. This type of battery is sealed. It does not need much maintenance in terms of topping the electrolyte. But the downside is that it is more expensive than the lead acid battery. Tubular battery. This type of battery is the most widely used. And it is the most cost-effective type of battery. Although it costs more than the other types of batteries, it lasts quite long. Also, the tubular battery gives out more energy. There are other ways to compare or differentiate batteries. There is the gel cell battery and the absorbent glass mat or AGM. The AGM is a more advanced and effective battery. It has a better design than the gel battery. It has a high level power of retaining amps and also packs a lot of power. 2. Net metering. The net metering system was created by the US government. The aim is to encourage more people to invest in renewable energy. The idea of net metering stems from the fact that AC power cannot be stored. Also, batteries are too expensive for many to acquire. This is a breakdown of how the net metering works. The local power grid is linked to your solar panel. During the day when there is sunlight, the PV sends excess electricity generated to the power grid. This electricity sent is calculated using the net meter. And what is sent is credited to your electricity bill. The credited power is then used at night or during lean periods. This is a more cost-effective means of storing solar electricity. 
But if you are staying off the grid, then this method may not serve you. This is because the cost of connecting to the grid could be quite astronomical. Unfortunately, power firms are threatening to start charging solar panel owners using the grid. They want the users to contribute to the maintenance of the grid. We have less conventional ways to store solar energy. Some of these methods are still under the trial stage. Therefore, they are not yet open for public use. 3. Flow battery. The flow battery is still in the developmental stage. Scientists are using the technology of fuel cells to store solar energy. Fuel cells are used in powering aircraft and space capsules. It capitalizes on the reactions which convert chemical energy to electricity. These chemicals are found in tiny organic molecules, for example, methanol. The method used in doing this is that the fuel cells are made to run on a reverse. When that happens, it converts the energy back to chemical reactants. The resultant flow battery will then store solar energy. This method will bring down the cost of storing energy drastically. This is because the material that will be used is a cheap, organic fuel. The flow battery has been in use for about 35 years now. But they were mainly used to store vanadium using the inorganic ion. 4. Hydrogen. Another big step being made in the storage of solar energy is the utilization of hydrogen. It is still in the research stage though. However, it is already showing a lot of promise. Solar energy when trapped is converted to hydrogen. This is against the normal process of converting it to electricity. The hydrogen is stored in a tank. From there it will be converted to CO2 carbon dioxide. It is then stored in the form of more combustive methanol. This will be burned at night. While it is burning, the methanol is converted back to carbon dioxide. It is then captured by a device that will store it for reuse. When the sun is up again, it will repeat the process. 5. Molten salt. This is another means used in storing solar energy. The process is as follows, the sunlight from the sun is concentrated on a receptor panel. The panel then gets heated up to a very high temperature. When it has achieved this high temperature, the salt is then poured on it. The salt has a unique quality that makes it suitable for this. It can heat to a very high temperature. It can also retain the heat for a long while. When the salt has absorbed the heat, it is then transferred to an insulated tank. That is where it is stored for future use. To use it, the heat from the salt is channeled into a steam-powered generator. This is then used in generating electricity. 6. Thermal fuel. The development of thermal fuel has a lot of positivity about it. It has renewed the hope of the long-term impact of solar power. The thermal fuel is being developed in Sweden. Information coming from there says that the thermal fuel can store solar energy for 10 years. This exciting info has it that thermal fuel is a molecule. It is made up of hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. Renewable energy is making a big push to replace fossil fuel there has been a lot of improvement in that energy sector. These improvements have both reduced the cost of renewable energy and improved energy efficiency. But, the issue of storage of energy needs to be solved. That is the only way that the impact of solar energy can be felt. There is need for sustainable and cheaper ways of storing solar energy. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you'll know once we post a new video. Also, drop a comment below so we can know your thoughts. Finally, don't forget to check the description below for more details and visit our site, www.zimsolarpoweradvisor.com for more awesome, solar power, content like this.